Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Esper Rafine. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Hope you guys have had a fantastic weekend. Hopefully, the start to your week is going exceptionally well. Today, we are testing out Esper Rafine. Now, I was a little surprised because I know about this deck, as most people do in standard right now. Uh, however, I've not played it uh, <laughs> at all. I just completely forgot about it, I guess. I, I have no idea. Uh, but I thought I would take a list from Aether Hub. This is just the, like, if you go to the meta area, this is kind of the list number one. Uh, and use this as a starting point to kind of get my thoughts gathered around the deck and, and see how it goes. Obviously, we know this deck is good, uh, despite how I may misplay, how I may lose games. We know that this deck is a very good deck. Uh, while it's not still sitting at the very top of the meta for best of one, it is still just a very powerful one. So... Obviously, Esper is the color combination, very controlly in a lot of ways. We do have, you know, Fading Hopes, Vanishing Verse, Meat Hook Massacre. We've got Void Rend. Uh, we've got Depopulate, which is kind of an interesting one. And then, of course, Wandering Emperor, Loth, all kinds of really nice uh, pieces. Kaito is in here. Uh, but it also gets to mix in some aggro-y elements, so Luminarch Aspirant, Wedding Announcement, obviously Rafine, uh, being one of the better creatures just in general right now. 3 mana, 1-4 with flying, with a ward cost of 1. Whenever you attack, a target attacking creature connives X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. So, what this allows you to do is really escalate, as long as you've got more and more creatures on the board, you can sort of completely go off. Uh, and just connive a ton uh, to dig through your deck, but then also throw a bunch of 1-1 encounters on some stuff to hopefully finish the game quickly. Uh, we do have Tenacious Underdog, Malevolent Hermit, uh, kind of an interesting include as a one of. Uh, we do have the Legion Angel package, so we've got a few in the sideboard here. And then, of course, Sanctuary, Sanctuary Warden. Wow, at the very top, uh, just an absolute powerhouse card. So I'm a little curious because, again, I've, I've played a couple games with this exact list. I've lost both. Uh, both of them were against very aggro-y decks. They were Boros aggro, and so I'm kind of curious to see how this fits in on the best of one ladder. Uh, again, just in my experience, because I haven't played it yet. So I'm going to misplay, I'm going to do things wrong, but you know what? We're going to have a blast, and we're going to kick off the week with a strong one. So let's see how it goes, guys. Let's jump right into the games. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. This is certainly an interesting hand. Uh, it's a little light on mana, but we do have a vanishing verse, and then of course just a bunch of three drops. I'm gonna try it. We're gonna we're gonna see how it goes. Uh, I'm not super optimistic, but I do really like the idea of being able to get these things down early. That's not the start you want. Uh, Meat Hook Massacre is not bad, though. That does help us out a little. Vanishing Verse will also just get rid of this if we need it, so we'll see what the opponent ends up playing. All right, probably going to get rid of the Kami instead of that, uh, which is perfectly fine by me. Um, so I think we wait here and see what they throw the 1-1 counter on. Chances are it's going to be the Kami, but wow, they've got so much. Uh, yeah, that's so sick. All right, well, let's see. Um, hmm. Okay, so they are going to split it here. I'm going to go ahead and exile the Kami. Uh, fantastic. All right, let's see how this goes. Uh, we do have the Void Rend that can deal with the souped up Generous Visitor, which is definitely a good play for us, I think. Um, let's do this. Again, we can kind of wait, though. We've got so much instant speed hit, like, it's not that big of a deal to wait. Um, so let's see what they do. They're just going to attack in. All right, I'm going to Void Rend the big one. Uh, get rid of it. Fantastic. All right, so let's throw Rafine out there. Uh, this is a golden opportunity because we do have the Fading Hope in hand. So if they are to play any kind of rune on the Generous Visitor, we can just bounce it and... I mean, it's it's gone. Um, very curious to see if they've got a play to deal with this. Wow, they're not going to attack? Going to attack? I don't know. I'm going to actually force the issue a little bit here. So I'm going to bounce this. Uh, I will take a land even, you know, the fact that it's a tapped land is a little frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and attack in. It's also going to connive. Um, what do we discard? I think it's just the other Rafine. Um... 
As much as I love having multiples just to be safe, I think this is perfectly fine. So now we have Voidrend up uh, on whatever they decide to play this turn. It looks like Generous Visitor again, which is fine. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna let that resolve. Yeah. Okay, uh, sure. Very good. All right, so let's attack first. Uh, let's connive. Um, unfortunately, I think it's just a land that we're gonna throw back this time, which is kind of okay. Let's do this, and then we're gonna shoot everything for two, uh, which is gonna get these two off the field. Obviously, we've gotten our attack in here, so we're feeling pretty good. That was a nice little easy two for one. Um, if they do play anything else, we've got the Void Rand plus just the Emperor. <laughs> um, hmm. Let's attack first. I like doing this first because you just never know what you're gonna need. Um, and so it's kind of better to, I think, do that. You know, as much as I really love the Wandering Emperor, is it just Void Rand? that we throw back. I think it's Voidrend. So it's gonna power up the Rafine a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and lull. It's a bit of an aggressive play. The safer play, I think, is just to leave up the Wandering Emperor, truthfully. Um, but I kinda like this play, just because now, you know, we're committing to the board a little bit more. Um, but I'm kinda cool with that. This also opens up much more connive triggers, which is really important. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and draw a card first. Let's do things in the proper order here. Um, we can double Aspirant, which is pretty good. Um, All right, uh, let's do this. We are gonna throw one Aspirant out there. Do we throw both and then just have Vanishing Verse also? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Why not? We're gonna do the cool play. Uh, let's do here. Wait, where's the other one going? All right, and then let's do here. All right, so we're gonna kinda, kinda get him a little bit. Uh, let's throw it on Rafine, obviously. So we connive for a lot. Um, I'm gonna throw these back. All right, uh, so now we'll see how they block, if at all. Wow, they just don't. Hmm. Then I'm gonna go ahead and proactive kill the Weaver. So the reason I'm doing that is because they can obviously double trigger an ability, which I'm not super into the idea of. <laughs> uh, and so now, I mean, the chances of them digging out of this are pretty low. Uh, and there we go, we got the win, fantastic. That was beautiful, guys. Let's see if we can get some more wins with this one. Let's jump into game two. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just wanna remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for our second game. Uh, this is a weird hand on the sense that we don't really do anything till turn three, but I'm actually gonna try it. Uh, if we find ourselves, yep, <laughs> against the same deck again. Uh, all right, let's throw the white source out. Black source will come down next, which will vanishing verse something. So we'll have to use the grim climb pathway for that. Uh, sure. This is all fine, honestly. Like, again, we've got the answer in hand, so it's not that big of a deal, but it's like a little annoying. Um, I don't like taking early game damage if we don't have to, but it's fine. Uh, let's see if they do. Let's go ahead and Vanishing Verse the, the Visitor. Uh, don't love the wedding announcement. That's kind of an annoying play for sure. We can actually just kill it, truthfully, but um, I actually think I want to get Rafine going here. Um, Rafine will stave off the attack unless they start equipping it up. They can't pay for the ward cost. <laughs> uh, yep. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> they rage quit. Yes. We got a rage quit, guys. That was amazing. Uh, sick. Let's jump into game three. <laughs> All right, guys. Here we are for game number three. 
Uh, and yeah, I mean, we, we definitely keep this. Uh, we've got a turn two underdog, which is perfectly reasonable. We'd like to, of course, get uh, an extra land here. Um, really, any land would be helpful. That's not good. Um, yeah, definitely don't love that. Um, but we might as well go ahead and get this down. This is going to be a re really annoying matchup. There's just no doubt about it. Uh, if we do get a land, which that would have been helpful, um, we should be able to deal with this. But we'll see. Uh, so we have to throw this out for blue. Uh, let's throw the attack at them first. Okay. And then I'm going to try and void rend. Uh All right. Sick. So that worked. I, here's the thing, against Mill, you just can't leave a Ruin Crab unchecked on the field. That's just always going to be a problem. Uh, and so it seems kind of obvious to me that we just kind of needed to do that. So let's drop Rafine here. This is going to allow us to uh, connive, which is obviously very good. Um, I think I'm going to throw the Masker back and just be able to get in for four here. It's a pretty aggressive play for sure, um, and losing a meat hook masker isn't exactly ideal, but it does allow us to, you know, guarantee pushing through some damage, which is very nice. And we do have enough removal with the wandering emperor in hand that we might be able to just kind of, you know, deal with the auger if they decide to attack in at some point or something like that. But I don't think this is going to be able to anytime soon. Topiary stomper school. This feels like a very ramp mill deck. Uh, which is interesting, like, including the Ruin Crab is a little interesting to me. Like, I don't know, I don't see a huge reason to, but, like, that's cool. Alright, um, I mean, we attack. Let's throw it on the Rafine here. We'll discard a Rafine. And I think we'll discard the Underdog. We can replay the Underdog at any point, really, so that's kind of helpful. Um, and this is a pretty swingy attack for sure. Uh, let's throw you out. And I think we just throw this out and minus two. Or excuse me, minus three. Uh, to get the extra two ones. So now, again, we're kind of shields upping while also being proactive with our attacks. And so at this point, like, they really have to have something this turn. Which they, hey, very easily could. But, um... Yeah, that's not going to do it. Um, so let's do the right things first. Let's go ahead and plus. Let's throw the Wandering Emperor out. So what we're going to do is... This does have reach. Which is relevant. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this can't block. Uh, so we're going to do this. We're gonna connive like a lot. <laughs> wow, a lot of misses, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it's just a bunch of lands that we're gonna discard here. We drew so many lands out of that. That was ridiculous. Um, all right, so yeah, I mean, this is still a really good attack. Having the one one counter here isn't that huge. Uh, they can still obviously just block the Rafine, um, but they're really gonna have to, they can't do that. They have to block the Rafine, not these two. Mm -hmm. But these just bounce off of each other. Uh, the Augur is just gonna die, which is great. And they still take some damage, which is also great. Let's throw Hive down. All right. So the 2-1 Menace is actually pretty important here because, again, unless they get another land, this can't do anything. Um, when they do get another land, that's still fine because they've only got three creatures, so... They may reconfigure onto something just to see what they can get, but at that point, they're so down on mana. Yeah, we did it. That was awesome. Uh, that's three undefeated games so far. I think we have plenty of time for one more, though, guys. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, here we are for our fourth game. Probably going to be our last. We'll see. Uh, but this is definitely a keep. We've got all the all the interaction in the world, which is honestly pretty good, depending on what we're against. Uh, that's going to be an annoying card for sure. Let's go ahead and throw the uh, Rafine's Tower down. 
Really don't love this. Um, this is going to be a very tricky game. There is no doubt about it. Vanishing Burst will be helpful. Meat Hook Massacre could be really good, but we'll see. Okay. Um, let's throw the double black out. Um, and we do just pass here. As much as I don't want to, I think we do just pass. Again, we're kind of well set up against this deck, but like, it's still not great. You know what I mean? Like, we've got the Meat Hook Massacre, we've got a wedding announcement, which can obviously block a good bit. Like, we've got some stuff. Uh, it's just gonna be a tricky game, there's no doubt about it. We should have done this prior to, but I think it's fine. That still gets a counter, which is annoying, but not the end of the world. Okay. Alright, um, I think we pass here, leaving up the Void Rend. Basically, our goal is to just not die. Um, if we can get them down to only a couple resources, we can really start to, to do some work. Okay. Yeah, that's very good. Let's go ahead and Void Rend that. Get it out of there. So we're still going to take three. Not great, but it's fine. Interesting. Okay, well, unfortunately, we don't have another great option, so we're just going to have to Rafine here, hoping they can't kill it. Um, they're going to be able to attack in pretty freely here, but um, we do get to block at least something. Unless they have, like, a Thundering Rebuke, which would be annoying, for sure. We really needed a land there. The Meat Hook Massacre is kind of our out. <laughs> Tapped land. Um, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> All right. So, what can we do? Really thinking because I think it's between wedding announcement and Kaito. Um, alternatively, we can just fading hope and you know leave something up here, but. I'm going to try for the wedding announcement. Not going to attack, obviously. And again, we're just in block mode. Like, if they can kill the 1-1, one, one, they might be able to just win it if they've got enough damage otherwise. Um, basically, we're saving for a meat hook for three. Like, if we can meat hook for three, we might be able to just kind of win it. But I think they're going to be able... Yeah, they're going to be able to kill that. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So we will again block here and all right. I mean, <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Let's do this. No, we're not going to attack. I'm sorry. We can't attack because if they have a haster, um, they just win. So let's go ahead and do this, this is going to sweep. Nice little three for one. We also gain some life in that process, which is very relevant here. So we're up to five. So they can't just like play with fire and kill us. Um, all right, that's fine. I mean, it's not great, obviously, but like it's not the end of the world. Um, I will attack. We're gonna discard Rafine. Okay, we're gonna lull. We're gonna throw a couple of these guys out. And now the wedding announcement flips and we've got a board full, ooh, excuse me, a board full of things. Okay, so they can deal with Rafine with that. They do have to pay a ward cost to do it, but that's fine. All right, um, I don't love the idea of drawing a card. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, but I think we just have to. Sanctuary Warden, that could be really good. Um, see this. So they can't block this, uh, which is really important. I'm gonna drop Kaito. 
I'm just going to draw a card. All right, we'll play the land. That's actually really nice because we can obviously um, now fading hope anything uh, that we so choose. So that's actually quite reasonable. What we can do is wait till the end of the turn and fading hope. Let's go ahead and bounce this one. I will keep a meat hook massacre just in case. <laughs> Just to be safe. Um, all right, so they are out of plays for the turn. We have a Sanctuary Warden coming down. So let's go ahead and drop the Sanctuary Warden. Um, I'll remove a counter from Kaito. And there we go. We did it. Four undefeated games in a row with Esperifine. Wow. Uh, I'm amazed. Let's talk about it. All right, so uh, despite what I mentioned in the very beginning, uh, we were able to pull out another undefeated run. I think that's three undefeated decks in a row, which is pretty amazing. Um, keeping in mind, of course, that this is very dependent on, you know, a small subset of games. So I do want to reiterate the fact that we only play a few games in a row, and that's all we play. Like, you see every game that I play. Um, but it's only a small subset. It's usually three to four games max. And so just keeping that in mind as you try decks out and that kind of stuff. However, Esper Rafine is one that we do know is good. We've seen this played on pro level play on that kind of, and so you know that this deck is relatively good. Um, I'm a little amazed though, because again, in practice, we lost two games in a row before I jumped into recording and that was it. Uh, there, there was no other practice with the deck, and so I feel like, in general, that was a really, really uh, lucky run, <laughs> um, but also a really good run. We got four games, guys. That's pretty sick. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is, I think, a really good list. I'm very surprised we hadn't played it yet. Uh, I just didn't have the opportunity to because I didn't have enough for fiends, so I thought I'd go for it today, uh, but man, what a blast of a deck. I really enjoyed this one. I do want to remind you guys, uh, just as a quick heads up, if you are another content creator checking out this video or this channel uh, we have a guest slot for you we would love for you to promote your content on our channel uh, and to do that all you got to do is get in contact with us it can be in any way you feel uh, necessary there is a contact form on our website if you would like to uh, please check that out we would love to give you guys a guest slot noon on Saturday Eastern Standard Time is when we do that guest slot uh, last weekend we had Cairo MTG hanging out with us Cairo did a phenomenal job so please do uh, hang out with him go subscribe to him but also if you're a content creator make sure you take advantage of that it's a great way to uh, to hopefully build your audience a little bit so thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I love you all very much. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you again very soon.